David Papineau is a well-known philosopher. He's at King's College London. He specializes in epistemology, philosophy of science, and philosophy of mind. And he's the author of a book called Philosophical Naturalism, which is one of the few full-scale defenses of the worldview of naturalism. Usually naturalism is assumed to be something that everybody knows, uh, or maybe something that science has discovered. And Papineau realizes that this, this isn't so. Not everybody knows this who's informed. And it's not exactly something, it's not something that's uncontroversially been uncovered by science. Although, in the end, he does think that science strongly supports naturalism. Uh, but he recognizes that we do need to give an argument for physicalism about human persons. And so he gives a very complicated argument for for that, which I'm going to go through now. Um, and before I do this, I have to say that I find some unclarity in this argument. What I'm about to present is my own formulation, um, my, my best attempt to understand his argument in a way which is valid and which is plausible. So, without further ado, here's what he calls his canonical argument for physicalism. And by canonical, he just means uh, one that should be widely accepted, kind of a standard argument. So the first premise is that all mental events cause physical events. At least we know that some do, right? Because, uh, for instance, fear can cause your, your heart rate to go up. Second premise is that all physical events are caused by prior physical causes. This is the causal completeness of physics, that physics captures complete causes for any physical event that there could be. Third premise is that no physical events which are caused by mental events are caused by two distinct events. We'll talk about his grounds for this in a minute. So those are his is three independent premises. Uh, none of those follow from each other. These are three independent premises and from those it follows that every mental event just is some physical event. And it seems to follow from that that humans are purely physical beings. So you might want to pause the video here, make sure you have this argument down so you can refer back to it. I'm going to discuss um, how the argument works and kind of illustrate it graphically and you may want to refer back to the premises while I'm doing that. So consider one such mental event, call this mental event M, and by premise 1, if premise 1 is true, then it must cause some physical event, let's call it P2. So for any mental event there is, it, it must cause some physical event. Now by the second premise, P2 must have a physical cause. So we know that there's some physical event, call it P1, which causes P2. Now so far it looks like this uh, physical event has two causes, doesn't it? One of the causes is M, the other one is P1. But premise 3 says that no such event, that is, no physical event which is caused by a mental event, has two causes. So it must be that event M just is event P1. So in other words, this one event, M, also known as P1, that event causes the physical change that we're talking about. But this holds generally for in, any M whatever. So for any mental event whatever, uh, if Pap Papineau's three premises are true, the same will hold. For any mental event, it causes a physical event, but every physical event is caused by a physical event, um, and no such event has two causes well, then it does follow from that, that every event within a human being is a physical event. 
so he's not defining mental and physical events so that they're mutually exclusive, so that one can't be the other. He believes that there are events such as pains or beliefs or desires. There are mental events, memories, but each mental, mental event is also a physical event. So a memory presumably just is a certain type of brain activity and a desire is maybe another type of brain activity and so on. And it does seem to follow his, his step five that humans are purely physical beings. An event is a thing having a feature, having a property at a time. All the events are physical events so it seems that all the properties of a human will be physical properties and then all the substances within that make up a human um, will be physical substances. Okay, so that's another run through his argument, and we'll talk more about the premises when he proceeds now to defend each one of them against objections. And Papineau, Ar Papineau uh, realizes that these three independent premises are none of them obvious or universally acknowledged truths. None of them is, obvi is as obvious as 2 plus 2 is 4, for instance. Um, so each one of them can be challenged by philosophers. Each one of them has been challenged by philosophers. And so to complete his case, he wants to knock down some objections to them, which he's aware that people will give. So what are those objections? The first one is that premise one is false because interactionism is false. So interactionism is the doctrine that mental events can cause physical events and physical events can cause mental events. It's mind-body interaction or um, mental event, physical event interactionism. Believe it or not, um, some famous philosophers have denied interactionism. Uh, the most famous of these is Leibniz, the early modern philosopher. And he died in the early 1700s. And Leibniz held to a theory he called pre-established harmony. He believed in mental events and in physical events, but he did not believe that any mental, mental event causes a physical event or that any physical event causes a mental event. And an analogy he gave for this is uh, two clocks that are running, and uh, one of them is just a teensy bit ahead of the other. So whenever this one's hand moves, in a certain into a certain position. A second later this one moves. And uh, if you didn't know that these were independently moving clocks, you might think that the first clock is causing the changes in the second clock. But no, these are just clocks that are built the same way and somebody wound them up in the same way and started them off almost at the same time. And so they're just a teeny bit out of sync whenever there's a change in one, then there's a change in the other one that occurs right after. But it's not that the first change is the cause of the second. That would be a mistake. So Leibniz believes that there are souls and there are physical objects and that um, these have just been pre-programmed to undergo certain changes. And the changes sort of come internally from the thing itself. and a change is never caused by an outside uh, thing impinging on it. So suppose I uh, kick you in the shins. I kick you right in the legs. Bam! There's a physical change there, right? And most of us believe that it's my foot hitting your shin that causes you to feel that nasty pain. That's not what Leibniz thinks. He thinks that um, you know, your soul was always just pre-programmed to feel pain as in your leg at that moment. 
and all the changes in the physical things were kind of pre-programmed as well. So pre-established, so if you deny interactionism, you deny that any physical event ever causes a mental event or vice versa. So um, maybe mental events can cause other ones. You could have something like uh, this, a, a causal sequence where one mental event causes the next. And uh, physical events, you might suppose, if you deny interactionism, can cause other physical events, but there's a separation that one never causes the other. But wait, there's more. There's another type of position in philosophy that denies uh, interactionism, and this is called epiphenomenalism. Epiphenomenalism. This is the view that mental events are real and that mental events have causes but they don't have effects. So there's a realm of physical causation in the world which I'll represent very crudely like this just one physical event causing the next and these physical events cause mental events but notice that the mental events don't cause anything themselves the mental events are, Papineau says, causal danglers on this view. They're caused, but they don't cause. They're events with causes, but without effects. Um, epiphenomenalism is a view that you might take if you think that all the causal intera interaction in the world is of the kind that physics would describe, but you want to say that there are mental events which are different than physical events. So you just make the mental a product of the physical, but not a product which ever makes a causal difference in the physical world. I've met a philosopher or two who holds to this. Um, it's not a popular view. And uh, against both of these rival views, pre-established harmony and epiphenomenalism, Papineau objects that it's obvious that mental events explain certain physical events, and so they must cause those physical events. So you want to drink and you go to the fridge. Why did you go to the fridge? That's a physical occurrence, right? The explanation for that physical occurrence is that you believe there was a drink in the fridge and you desire to drink. So there you have a mental cause and a physical effect. And if there is cause and effect like that in the world, then those other views are false. So he says mental events explain and so cause physical effects. Now I have to agree with him that it is obvious that uh, there is interaction between mental events and physical events. Um, here's something to help you remember that. This cartoon guy here happens to see a lovely lady. And uh, her being near him causes certain physical events. Right? Light, from, light bounces off of her and reaches his eye. So there you have a physical event causing a mental event. The sight of her causes him to become excited, and his getting excited causes him to behave in interesting ways. Papineau also argues that we haven't found causal danglers like that in science, and so it'd be really surprising if we found them uh, when it came to mind and body.